Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I'm your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, our two daughters, Tatum and Delaney, our tuxedo kitty, Lilu, and our Padango puppy, Sophie. Welcome. Uh, it's been an age since I last podcast. Let's see. Yeah, about a month ago. And uh, I can't, I don't have any, really any excuse except for that I've been busy. Um, Working, I went on two trips. Well, one small trip and and one um, larger vacation, and uh, yeah. Plus, it's been hot, and this is the upstairs. And the unfortunate thing about our place is that the air conditioner does not always. Well, I just, air conditioner really doesn't make it up here, and so we had a couple of um, about two weeks ago. We had some several. 95 plus days and uh and it just gets too hot up here to to do anything so um there was no podcasting to be had and there was not all that much knitting to be done either because it was just hot but anyway um i am here to do my knitting podcast i show you all the things that i have knit or am working on right now things that i have finished uh, things that i'm kind of planning on knitting next i have some some yarn stuff to show you. I have some other stuff to show you. So, um, and then I'll talk a little bit about, you know, life in general and, um, and yeah, we'll go with that. If you were looking for me on Ravelry, I am Christy dash Lael. And on Instagram, I am Christy Lael without the dash. We'll try to remember to put the spellings down below for that. And I do apologize. I don't spend a lot of time on Ravelry at this point. I used to spend all my time on Ravelry, all my free time, but um, I have not been so keen on some of the ways that, that they have run their business um, in the past little while, and so um, I just don't spend any uh, any time, any more time than I absolutely need to on there at this point. Um, I do keep track of my yarn and my projects on there because I haven't found a better way to do that yet, uh, another platform to do that on, and um, and then I, uh, yeah, and that and that that is all that I do. Uh, but I don't. Oh, and I do. I find my patterns there, so I do use it for that. But um, but. Again, the, re the main reason is because I haven't found a better way, an alternative um, to do that with. But I don't spend any time playing around in there. I don't spend time on the forums and stuff like that. Because I don't feel like they um, include everybody anymore. And um, and it used to be that they did, and it used to be that they didn't exclude anybody. Um, and now they definitely do. And so I have issues with that. So... Yeah, and they're a private company, and they can do what they want. But I can also choose not to uh, not to support uh, as much as possible. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm not getting onto that. Uh, there's lots of people who have said lots of more eloquent things about it uh, over the past while. So I'm not going to to get into it. But I am going to get into knitting. I will also try to post my show notes this time, so you guys can link to the things that I refer to and whatnot. Um, like my new shirt. It's a cat tree. Um, I get my shirts from Threadless, uh, which I will hopefully link down below. And um, I just made an order. I hadn't bought any in a long, long time and I didn't have any left because, you know, they're t-shirts. They only last for so long. Um, and I don't like to wear them when they start um, looking worn out and, and, um, like uh pulled out of shape um especially being a big girl I really don't like it when they they look all um pulled out of shape because it makes me feel slobby and I don't like that um so I had gotten rid of them and um they had a sale recently and so I got like five shirts and I'd forgotten how much I really enjoy wearing shirts with fun things on them. I can't wear this kind of thing for work. And that was the other reason is there's not, uh, not a lot of, I'm not one to change clothes when I come home from work. So, um, uh, 
I was like, well, I don't really need them either, but you know what? They're fun. I just, yeah. So anyway, threadless. Um, I really enjoy their shirts and, uh, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the things that I have recently finished knitting. It's all socks, just FYI. Um, I've done several pairs of socks over the past month. And so I will show those all to you now. Last podcast, I had shown you this, um, hoe, uh, half finished, half finished object that, um, I had knit out of yarn out of stitch. Oops, sorry. Stitch together studio. The colorway is jingle batch number six. Um, and it is in their fra um, frugal fingering base. Um, it's a hundred percent Merino and the, so I mean, the socks were great. Um, I, I like the colorway just fine, but I wasn't feeling it for Christmas. This was supposed to be one of my Christmas socks. And it looked more Christmassy when it was in the skein or in the hank. Um, and when I started knitting it up, it just, I just didn't get quite a Christmas vibe. And I was going through kind of a, a rut and I just didn't want to finish. <laughs> so I asked Delaney if, uh, if she would like them. Um, and she said, yes, she never matches her socks. So I decided not to knit the um, second sock the same size as the first sock. So I basically just made this a row city roller. I, I think I did about 25 rows after I finished the heel because I do all of my socks toe up. I do most of my socks toe up. Um, and, and then I just bound off with Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off, which gives you this nice roll. And since Delaney doesn't match her socks anyway, she would never wear these two socks together, even if they were exactly the same. I figured this one she can wear with her short socks and this one she can wear with her long socks and everybody's happy. Um, so I still have a decent amount left over, which I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with. I might put it in my scrappy Christmas sweater, my ugly Christmas sweater that I'm planning to make eventually. Um, I might make it for, for this Christmas. It may be next Christmas, but I'm taking all of the scraps from all the Christmas socks that I have knit and, and I'm just going to model them together, hold them double. It's all fingering weight, all different amounts of leftovers. And I'm going to knit them all together to make just a basic raglan. Um, I think I'm going to make a cardigan and, um, and then I'm going, I'm like leaving the, the, I'm not weaving in any ends. I'm just going to leave them hanging out. I'm going to add ugly buttons and maybe some, um, like, uh, Christmas balls, Christmas tree balls and stuff like that. Just, just all kinds of, of ugliness on this sweater that will all be hand knit. So this might be used for that because I think the red will be fine. Um, but I just wasn't feeling it for a pair of Christmas socks. And, you know, that's okay. This, they're still going to be used. I still got some good entertainment out of knitting them, and that's the important thing. Next, I knit two pairs of tweed socks. I apologize if I keep looking over there, but I've got the recording on my iPad, and I have got it upside down. All right. It's yeah, basically upside down. So normally I have the camera on that side. I don't. I have it on this side this time, and I'm trying to remember to look in the right direction, but I catch myself missing. Um, anyway, so I knit two pairs of tweed socks. These are both out of uh, Northwood Fibers. Um, this is a dyer that I discovered last October or November. This is the colorway. I, I apologize I don't remember how I discovered her. I feel like somebody said, Hey, Christy, check this out on Instagram, but I don't know for sure. And I can't remember who that was, if it was somebody, but this is the colorway that she had posted. It was amazing. Um, such a great slight twist on a traditional color Christmas colorway. And I just fell in love with them and the tweed just added so much. So, um, I went ahead and bought it and I absolutely love this pair of socks. I did this with my true, um, traditional, uh, sock recipe. Uh, and I do have that as a free pattern on Ravelry, by the way, it's called Christie's stripey sock recipe. 
Turkish toe cast on toe up socks. I do a true afterthought heel and then one by one ribbing with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And when I do a pair of socks that is out of, of a variegated yarn, I normally do 12 rows of ribbing and then bind off. But with stripes, I start um, the ribbing with one stripe and I go until I get to a good length that works with the stripe pattern. So this time um, I did, you know, a green uh, tan and then black stripe. And then I did one row regular with the next tan and then bound off with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which I always use for my toe up socks. And that was the end of that. This pair, for some reason, I did with, I didn't even do this with a true afterthought heel, I did this with a forethought heel, uh, which is where instead of just, it's like, so I, okay, I don't know. an afterthought heel is the beauty of an afterthought heel, besides the fact that you don't ruin um, the striping sequence on soft striping socks, is that you can choose to put the heel in wherever you want when you decide where it want, where you want it to go. So you don't have to, if you're out knitting in public and you don't have your um, measuring tape with you, or you don't know exactly who the socks these are, who these socks are going to go to. And so you don't want to commit yourself to putting in a heel at that moment or on that pair of socks um, at that moment, then you can uh, just choose to do it later. And you just cut in and um, you thread the needles on the, the side that the heel would go on and then you cut the yarn and and uh, knit off of the sock that way. Uh, with a forethought heel, you know where your socks, where, excuse me, you know where your heel is gonna go, but a forethought heel is perfect for um, for striping socks because, you know, you, I, I know, for socks for me, I know where the heel is gonna go, but I don't want to mess up the stripe sequence, so I put in, I, I used to, put in a piece of waist yarn where that heel would go. And then when I went back, I just had to pick up the stitches where that waist yarn was and take it out. Uh, so instead of cutting, you have that waist yarn. Um, and I hadn't done that in a long time, but with this pair, I went ahead and did it, and I remembered why I hadn't done that in a long time. I really um, prefer the way that you knit the true afterthought heel. Um, you don't, it really does a superior job in making sure that you don't have any uh, holes here. Whereas with the forethought heel, you do still have to kind of do some some fancy footwork to make sure there's no holes. Now I have, there, there, there are, there are some tricks that I have done in the past that help but the um, the true afterthought heel is easier, and I use Kirby Werby's um, technique with that, where she doesn't unravel all the way back. So there's like I leave two stitches on either side, so four stitches total that are on the needle, but not, I haven't unraveled all the way through. I don't know if I'm making that make sense, but um, it. It makes it so that there are really, I mean, really, there's no hole there, um, which is awesome. I don't know if I said, but this was Farmhouse Christmas colorway. Sorry. And then, as I said, I did two pairs of Christmas tweed socks. This is the second pair. This is also from Northwood Fibers, and this colorway is Hallmark Christmas. Like this colorway as well, not as much, I have to admit, not as much as the um, Farmhouse Christmas, but um, I do really like the tweed base. In the socks, I'm not sure how much I'm going to enjoy wearing them. I haven't ever worn tweed socks before. Um, I do love the look of tweed yarn. I love it, love it, love it in cabled sweaters, um, but uh, but I've never worn it in socks. So we'll see how how much I... I enjoy these. Um, I do have some other tweed sock yarn. Like I have this gorgeous orange from Two Guys Yarn Company. I think it's called, um, yeah, Road Hazard. And 
I have this pretty gray from Maker's Haven. Um, and I'm like, well, but if I like tweed socks, if I like, if I like these tweed socks, then I have two more skeins I can make into tweed, more tweed socks for myself. If I don't, then um, I can take, I can take these two and put them together in like a, something else, a shawl or something. I don't know. So yeah, we'll see. I have one more pair of finished Christmas socks. And um, I finished these while we were on our trip just last week. And I love them. You can kind of see them now as I'm trying to put the second sock on the blocker. So this, this is pair number 29, by the way, for Christmas socks. So I have two more pairs that I need to make. Um, I took out a couple. I didn't get them all done. I think I had 26 at the end of last year. And I took out two pairs, I think, that I didn't feel were Christmassy enough. And then I have made enough. <laughs> I don't know the math. Um, what do you think I am? An accountant? Uh, if you don't know, that's my job. I'm an accountant. <laughs> anyway, um, I, uh, I now have 29. So this is the 29th pair. I absolutely love, 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 love this colorway. This is the um, special Christmas colorway that Knitterly Things did last year for Simply Sock Company. Um, it came with a bag It was a whole kit, came with this bag, which I absolutely love as well. This yarn, a couple of uh, Christmas tree stitch markers. And um, oh, this colorway is just great. Knitterly Things is really one of my favorite stripey dyers. I have so much of her yarn. I've done her sock clubs, uh, her yearly sock clubs many times. I just really appreciate her color sense, I guess. Um, and I like her base. I love the way her socks feel. And so, yeah. So like I said, this is pair number 29. And um, yeah, I now have two more pairs that I need to knit. I do not have enough yarn for two more pairs. Today is July 2nd. And I kind of had hoped that Simply Socks would do another Christmas in July sale. Um, but they doesn't, doesn't look like they have or are planning to. So um, I might look around I do have one skein of Regia that I bought for Christmas socks. Um, it is very similar to the other skein of Regia that I bought. So I'm kind of hemming and hawing about whether or not I want to knit that into socks for, for me or save it for something else. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye out for Christmas socks. I still, you know, I only have two more pairs that I need to knit before December 31st. I can you know, if nobody does, or if there's not a, a Christmas in July colorway, Christmas colorway that I want now, then, you know, dyers are going to start doing their Christmas stuff come, you know, August, September, October, somewhere around there. And that's plenty of time for me to knit to the two last pairs of socks. So plus I'm not opposed to knitting something other than Christmas socks. I've haven't knit a lot of socks this year, but uh, a good portion of them have been Christmas socks. So kind of okay with something that isn't Christmas colors. And speaking of, I finished two other pairs of socks while we were on vacation. And they are both Tabby Tug socks. Tabby Tug is my new favorite... Um, pattern for shorty socks. And, uh, and it's the reason why I said that I knit most of my socks toe up because tabby tug, tabby tug, while the pattern does include both toe up and top down instructions, I've discovered that I like the top down instructions better. So I have been knitting them top down instead. And here is the first pair, which blends into my shirt really well, actually. These are both knit out of the same 
yarn, uh, not well, not the same yarn, but the same yarn company, Julie Spins. This colorway is Gooseberry. Uh, you might recall I picked up 250 gram skeins um, from the Loop BU when I was there, uh, I think it was there on Halloween. And um, so I picked up 250 gram skeins, which I was thinking to make into something else. Decided I really just wanted them into tabby tug socks. I wear a lot of Vans and Chucks um, at uh, Van Ward shoes and Chucks, low, the low top uh, for both. I have high tops for both as well, but I, I prefer the low top. And um, and then I'll wear like uh, capris or uh, I I peg my, my jeans and, and roll them up and that kind of thing. And so... Um, having those short shoes with these cute socks with that. I like that look. And so um, I'm not wearing them right now because it's just hot. In June, July, and August, I don't really wear knit socks all that often. Um, but, uh, but I do wear them all the rest of the year. And so um, I have plenty of use for, for these. So there you go. And Tabby Tug, and uh, you know, a link down below where you can get the pattern for this. Um, I cannot remember the designer's name, but I do really, really, really enjoy this pattern. And then my last pair of finished socks is also Tabby Tug, um, and that is also out of Julie Spins. This colorway is Habanero, and um, I do really like that. And I think that the Habanero and the Gooseberry complement each other nicely. Um, I have, I like to match my socks to what I'm wearing, so um, it's nice to be able to have these kinds of colors. Um, you might notice that a lot of the socks that I'm kind of drawn to knit for these short ones um, have the same colors as the clothes that I wear. So, <sighs> anyway, um, so really, really enjoyed this colorway as well. So that is the final finished pair of socks. Five pairs, not too bad. Um, I do, uh, now we'll get into my whips. I have a hoe, and that is this sock. So this is the next pair of tabby tugs that I'm working on. Um, I am knitting it out of Huloco. Uh, this is actually the leftovers. Here's what I've got left. This is the leftovers from my tasting menu. She looks like this. Um, I used this skein. This is uh, her Phyllis sock base in salt water. Um, and I had like 45 grams left, which isn't quite enough to knit a pair of tabby tugs. That's by the way, I can knit a whole pair of tabby tugs out of a 50 gram skein, which, which is nice. Um, so anyway, I, uh, I didn't have quite enough to knit the whole pair. So I've got some uh, I got a little Lolo from Lolo Did It in Blue Tourmaline, which is one of my favorite solids of hers. And I'm using that for the toe on this one. I started knitting this while we were on our trip and I didn't bring my uh, scale with me and I forgot how much this weighs and I couldn't weigh it when I finished this, when I got mostly done with the first sock. So I don't know if I split it in half. So there may be more blue tourmaline on the toe, of, like the toe may be longer um, on the second sock, we'll see. This is what I have left, and I have just done the tab part. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I've wound some yarn. I've decided that right now I'm in the mood for um, tabby tuck socks, so I'm gonna be knitting several pairs of those for the foreseeable future. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many I'm gonna do. I know I'm gonna do at least two more pairs uh, because I have wound the yarn for them already. So I have this skein, which is Leading Men Fiber Arts in the colorway um, Love You to Pieces, I believe, which it's kind of like Reese's Pieces colors. And then I have this skein which is 
also leading men fiber arts. Oh, and the colorway is um, Christmas at the Gables, I believe, um, which is obviously a reference to Green Gables or Anne of Green Gables. Um, but I don't, I don't see the color connection. Um, I just saw it my my local yarn, sh my local yarn shop, which is Colorful Yarns in Centennial, carried this color, and I thought, you know what, I wear. I have a lot of things that this would complement, so this would make a good pair of socks for me to make. Um, I also have pulled out... Sorry, I don't mean to keep getting so close to the camera, but the desk is right there. Um, I've also pulled out some other 50 gram skeins that I am planning on making into um, tabby tug socks. Some of them were sock sets that came with a 20 gram mini but I have decided not to, in order to make a full pair of socks, but I've decided not to make them into full socks. So I have taken those minis and um, you see that, that cart right there. Uh, that's where all of my minis, all of my solid minis that I use for sock heels and toes are there. So those are where those, that is where those are at. So here are some of the ones that I'm thinking of for future socks. I have uh, this skein of Lady Men Fiber, Fiber Arts in Apocalypse. This is not a good representation of this color. It is much more of a tealy aqua, but I love this this color, to, those two colors together. Um, along with, you might notice that I have a lot of leading men fiber arts. I love their showstopper base, and I love that they do the intermission, which is the 50 gram, um, 50 gram put up. I could write up. I was kept thinking write up. I'm like, that's not the right word. Um, so, and there's such a great price that they're only $12. And I'm like, I can, I can justify $12 for a pair of socks. Um, so anyway, this is another one by them. This colorway is Complete Imagination. They were at Yarn Fest in Longmont in 2019. And so I bought several when I was there. These ones with these hangy tags are from when I was in uh, at Yarn Fest. Um, these ones with the colorful yarn price tag are from my local yarn shop. Um, and then I have this one. This is the Upside Down, which didn't come from my local yarn shop, but I bought from them uh, directly. So yeah, like them a lot. I also have one more Leading Men Fiber Arts, and that is this colorway. This is Anne's Story, which I'm assuming is also an Anne of Green Gables reference. And I just loved these colors. Then I have some Giddy yarns. Or I have, yeah, I have two Giddy yarns. Um, and these were sock sets. Uh, so this is Salvage. She had overdyed a colorway that didn't work out. And I loved how it turned out. And then this one is called Vampire's Kiss. I don't think so. I think... I don't know. I bought these probably in 2017. So I, or 2018. I don't remember. I don't know if the, doesn't seem like that's the right name. So I, maybe I got the tags messed up. I'm really very good about that. I keep the tags on until I use the yarn or maybe the mini that came with it. And I don't remember what the mini looked like. Um, explained that. Anyway, it's a pretty orange. We're going with that. And then I have two that were hand dyed by Kate, who is a defunct yarn dyer at this point. Um, she had some issues, but I did get yarn from her before she did. Uh, so this colorway is called Lux, I guess. Yeah. And this one is called Springy. So, um... So yeah, those are the, the 50 grams that I am planning on making into socks for myself um, sometime. Uh, I do still have some 50 gram 
skeins and and just so that you know and I'm not taking all of my sock sets and turning them into just shorty socks because I have this one especially by uh Erin who is a friend of mine and dyes bling your string and makes bling your string bag she's my favorite Canadian um this one I definitely need to make into a full pair of socks I absolutely love these colorways and this orange I have to say, I think, is my absolute favorite shade of orange. So, yes, Erin, if you ever like this colorway, man. Yeah, and so this is called Foliage, by the way. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so... I have one more whip to show you, and that is the sweater that I have been making for my mom. The sweater pattern is called Hysipi. A friend told me in the comments how to pronounce it after the last time I tried to pronounce it and butchered it. And now I can't remember what she said. Anyway, it's that pattern um, and I'm knitting it for my mom. I'm knitting it out of um, Chasing Rabbits fiber arts in the colorway uh colorful yarns it was a color that they uh that my yarn shop my local yarn shop had commissioned for chasing rabbits to dye um they kind of commission a monthly colorway from chasing rabbits which is awesome because i love her yarn i have started it uh the, you can see the sleeves are off um, and I have been, I've been trying to get the sleeves done because the sleeves have the lace, which means that I have to pay attention. I have, you know, a chart and whatnot. I actually use my tablet that I'm recording on. Um, I use the knit companion app for the, the chart. And I find that that's super awesome, especially because it's, I don't know, it's like 30, somewhere 30 or 40 rows and when you're doing sleeves, that means you're going back around and around and around. And it's so easy to keep track with the, um, with the app. The downfall is that I have to make sure that I have my tablet with me if I'm going to knit on this. And I also have to make sure that um, I have space to be able to set the tablet up because I have to, because there's not a lot of time between rows of the lace um, to like, you know, oh, well, I'll just go, you know, like when you're doing the body, I'll go all the way around before I get back to that lace bit. But going all the way around a sleeve isn't all that much going around. So, um, so anyway, I do love the look of the lace and, um, and I love how it, how the colorway is complementing that. Um, I think the colorway is fantastic. I love I love how it's turning out. This is the back, so you can kind of see more of how pretty it is. I'm just really, really keen. I am, of course, alternating skeins. Um, I have gotten now to where I only have one on the sleeve because um, there's there's been no real pooling. But all of this bit was alternated, and uh, and the sleeve is getting small enough that I don't really feel the need to alternate, especially because of how annoying it is to alternate on the sleeves. So um so yeah, I'm um uh, my mom's got short arms, so I'd say I'm getting pretty close to. I'd say on my mom, I'm probably right about here because she, her arms are quite a bit shorter than mine. Um, so not too much further before I need to do the, um, the ribbing for the end of the sleeve. And then I'm going to do the second sleeve because I'll be in sleeve mode. I'll have that, that chart full on memorized and, and in my head. And then, um, the body is just stockinette. So, um, I figured let's get the chart out of the way and then I can just do the stockinette and I can knit it while we're watching TV and whatnot. So right now um, I'm 
kind of stuck in, I need to have some time to be able to set up and get into the chart. Uh, when we were on our trip recently, I, I knit this while we were driving, which was great because I could set the tablet up in my lap and, and knit. Um, but, uh, but when we get home from work and whatnot, um, if I have to watch, pay attention to what's going on to the TV, then I can't uh, knit this quite so much. And like last night would have been a perfect example because I had plenty of time, but Delaney wanted to watch anime and that's our, that's the thing, that's a special thing that we do together, her and I, and um, we're watching subtitled anime and I can't read subtitles and um and knit that and i am hearing impaired so we use closed caption all the time uh, so you would think that i could because i'm basically having subtitles on everything but there's a difference between using the closed caption to help help you decipher what you thought you heard um and having subtitles when what they're speaking is a completely different language so uh closed caption is kind of a backup to make sure that I don't miss anything that's being said. And subtitles, I have to know exactly what everything that's being written down. So yeah, I don't know if any of y'all have hearing loss or uh, have any experience with closed caption and subtitles and have noticed that difference, but, uh, but it is a difference for me for sure. Uh, so that's all the knitting I have. I did mention a couple of times now that I've been on two trips recently. Uh, the end of May was Ron's 50th birthday, so we went and spent the weekend in Fort Collins. Uh, the original plan had been that we were going to go to New Orleans, and um, and we ended up in Fort Collins, <laughs> which, which if you don't know, that's only like an hour from where we're at right now. So it's like an afternoon drive. Not you know, you could go and and you could go to dinner in Fort Collins and come back home uh, to where we are now, but. Um, but Ron was concerned about uh, traveling too far um, with, you know, COVID and the civil unrest and whatnot that's kind of been going on, uh, especially when we were making the plans, which was earlier in the year. And um, he and I really like history in Fort Collins. Old Town Fort Collins has some great history. And so I posted lots of pictures on Instagram um, but that's kind of where we ended up at. And I was really okay with it because Fort Collins is where the Loopy U's shop is and Nicole of Huloco's shop. Um, so she has, uh, Nicole has a storefront that is open only on Saturdays. So I was like, yeah, we can go to Fort Collins and spend the weekend. I just need to stop off at these two yarn shops just for a bit, okay? And Ron, of course, supports my habit completely. And so we did stop and I bought, I bought yarn. Of course I bought yarn. So from the Loopy U, I got two skeins of Dream in Color. Uh, this is the Aran Weight. The colorway is quirky. It was one of the special dyed just for the Loopy U colorways. It's got all the autumn colors that I absolutely love. And so I, of course, had to get it. I would love to make this into a sweater. Um, but I feel like, uh, but I couldn't justify. <laughs> I'd already, already had a sweater's quantity in my, in my basket. So, um, I just got a single skein. I'd probably make it into a hat or something like that. But I just love the colorway. Um, I also got this skein. This is Smushy with Cashmere. Um, the colorway is Cloud to Ground, and it is also super, super gorgeous. And actually, this... I ordered online and um, I ordered it online a couple of months ago and when I was checking on the tracking, I think, I realized that it had my address from California when we lived there and that is where it had been shipped to. I don't know how that had happened, but, um, but I contacted them and they said they would of course ship it to me if, uh, if it had ever made back to them. and. Um, and, you know, it was just, it was one of those things. I didn't check before I had, because we lived here for, you know, close to five years. But for some reason, um, I, I hadn't deleted that old address. And so, yeah. So it when I went back 
when I went to the shop that weekend, I said, you know, I was just wondering if it ever came back and it hadn't, but they um, were really nice. They, I had used some store credit for it, for this, and they had let me reuse that store credit. So um, I was able to replace it, which was super awesome. And so while I was at the Loopy U, I was looking for sweater quantities because I like knitting sweaters, but I didn't want to spend too much money because I knew I was still going to go to the Loopy U and I was probably going to buy a sweater quantity there. You know how it goes. So um, anyway, I came across this beautiful yarn. This is a uh, Sandus set. Sardinez Garn Pure Gint, um, which is Norwegian yarn, and um, they come in these gorgeous colors. The price is very reasonable, um, and so I got a sweater quantity in these colors to make a Soldat Nut Top by Caitlin Hunter. Um, these will be my main colors, and then these are the accent colors, and, um, and yeah, because it's a short-sleeved kind of cropped top. I didn't need that much. It was a very reasonably priced purchase, um, and the colors are gorgeous. It's not the softest yarn, um, but it's going to be worn over something, so that's okay. Uh, this is colorway 2337. This is colorway 2564. This is colorway 2035. And this is 6553. And then while I was at Huloco, um, I had originally planned on getting a sweater quantity in Mustard Party because I had made this baby sweater recently for my coworker who had a son. And um, I loved the way the colorway knit up, and so I was hoping that I could get a sweater quantity in Mustard Party. Unfortunately, that colorway has been retired, uh, so not only could I not get any more uh, there, but I couldn't even ask for it to be ordered, and I understand, or to be dyed to order. I understand, you know, that that, that happens, you know, they've got to be able to make room for new colorways and whatnot. Um, uh, I just wish that I had gotten it when... <laughs> I think that if I were to, um, like message Nicole and say, Hey, I really love this colorway. Could I buy, um, you know, a pan's worth? Cause if, if they're dying a whole pan, uh, or two pans, whatever I would need for a, for a sweater, then they're not really, they're not wasting anything because, you know, um, I've already paid for it and they're dying it for me and they're not having to die any extra to try to sell in the shop. So, but anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. Uh, it's a great colorway. If you find any, uh, I would suggest that you grab it because it's such a beautiful colorway. Um, and you saw how beautiful it knits up, but I did find a new sweater quantity that, uh, that I could use to knit up. And I, shamelessly copied the designer on this, but I have fallen in love since the first moment I saw it with the hoodie shawl cardigan. It looks like this. It is a pattern by Suzanne Summer and, um, and I love it. And I love the colors that it is. I, that it's just perfect in what it is. So I was like, wait, do you guys have something in these colors? And yeah, they did. So this is the uh, Spun Sock XL put up, which is a, um, it's, it's an 80, 10, 10 um, merino cashmere nylon mix, but it's 150 grams. So it's 600 yards. So um, I didn't need to buy as many skeins. I just bought one of each in each color and then a couple of their minis. So uh, this colorway is Poppy, which is the perfect color that I was looking for. And then they have a beautiful gray. Uh, with, this is Ash, um, which fits perfectly with that pattern. And then I needed a light colored speckled, a lightly speckled, light colored yarn. And um, the the yarn that was used in the, these, these aren't the colorways that was used in that 
sample that they, I think that was Madeline Tosh, but, um, but these are complementing, right? And so I finally decided on uh, this colorway, which is Chickadee. I think it's going to work nicely. I love them together. They work out so perfectly. And um, I'm super keen to knit it. But of course, I can't start it anytime soon because knit a sweater for my mom. And I have one, two, three, four, four UFOs that I wanted to get finished this year. So I could probably get away with not finishing two of them, but two of them are sweaters that I was really keen on having last year and I didn't get to wear them. Now I want to wear them, or at least I will when it cools down, because right now it's, I don't want to wear anything. <laughs> it's too hot, but yeah, so I'm gonna finish mom's sweater and then I'm gonna finish those other sweaters and then, and then, if we're honest, I will have my eye on something else and I will start that instead because <laughs> that's who I am. I'm definitely a mood knitter. Um, and so it's going to take a while before I, um, before I get to it. But you know what? That's okay because I have the yarn and I'm ready when, uh, when my heart is ready to knit it. I have one other thing that I had gotten from Hue Loco, but I didn't buy this in their shop. I had ordered it. Uh, as a, um, what's it called when you order ahead? Uh, gosh, I can't remember words. Anyway, uh, so I had ordered it and, uh, and it came about a week after we went on, came back from Fort Collins and it is, this is a pre-order. Ordered it as a pre-order, um, so it came when she had dyed it, and it is the um, Tropic of Cancer sock set. So it came with um, a hundred gram skein and then two minis to knit together. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for. I'm kind of thinking I would love it to be a shawl instead of a pair of socks, uh, but I haven't decided yet. So um, I just thought it was beautiful. It also complements my shirt lovely. I do like the same kind of colors. So that's all the yarn that I've got. Um, so yeah, so we went on, we went to Fort Collins, as I said, and then last week we took a family vacation to South Dakota and we stayed, um, uh, we basically went to the Black Hills in order to see um, the beauty that is the Black Hills. It's a gorgeous part of the country. I don't know if you've ever been there. Uh, Mount Rushmore is there. Uh, Crazy Horse is also there. And um, and then there's, of course, the Black Hills, which is famous for its Black Hills gold, which I, of course, got some because I'm not going to waste that opportunity to get actual Black Hills gold in actual Black Hills. Um, we also went to Deadwood, which is where... Um, Wild Bill Hickok was murdered and where he is buried along with Calamity Jane. Um, and we went to Custer State Park, saw Buffalo, um, which uh, Buffalo is great, but we can see Buffalo here. So not quite as exciting as it was the first time we saw Buffalo. Uh, when we were living in California, we went to Yellowstone and we're like, oh my gosh, there's no go. Uh, now um, there's actually a, um, a herd that lives near my parents' house. And so we kind of see them most every time we go to visit my parents. Um, but I mean, bison are still beautiful animals and still really neat to see. But yeah, it was just a really pretty area. Um, we got to camp and spend time with the family, which was super important. Um, I got lots of knitting done. I did not buy any yarn. There weren't, I, I'm sure there are yarn shops in South Dakota. Um, I'm sure there are indie dyers in South Dakota, but I did not do much searching for that. Um, partly because I don't really need any yarn. And also, and mainly, because uh, we had no um, service <laughs> uh, in our campground. And um, so we 
I mean, like none, none whatsoever. Couldn't text each other, couldn't do anything. And so um, it was only when we were out and seeing things that we had an e-cell service. And at that point I was seeing things instead of uh, looking at my phone. So in, so we, you know, I didn't buy any yarn, but I did spend a lot of time with my family, uh, my parents and my brother and my kids and my husband, of course, and then my Aunt Kathy. We had a great time um, and it was beautiful. So I posted some pretty pictures on Instagram. I might see if I can show you a couple here, uh, but it was really neat. If you've never seen Mount Rushmore, if you've never gone there, uh, totally worth seeing. I thought that it wasn't going to be. I thought, well, you know, I've seen lots of pictures of it. It's going to be just like the pictures. Um, but there's, there's something about being there and seeing it in real life. So yeah, so that was, that was it. And, um, yeah. And so it, you know, I, I've come back to work. I went back to work last week, the, this past week, it's Friday. Um, my office is closed today for 4th of July. So, um, that was kind of cool. Uh, so I got to come back to work on Monday and only had to work four days. And then I, next week I only have to work four days too, because we also have Monday off for independence day. Uh, so anyway, but, um, but coming back to work, you know, is always hard after you come on vacation. I did get some really good news this week. I got a promotion, which is kind of nice. Been there for three years. And so it's kind of cool to, to, to get that. Now I feel like I've really earned it this past year with all the the extra work that I've done and, and whatnot. Um, I'm really, really pleased with my company. I, I've never worked for a company that I felt so valued by. So, um, so yeah, just another great thing that, that my company has done. Uh, and, um, and yeah, now it's the weekend. Uh, it is Independence Day weekend. And we're going to spend some more time with the family because you can never have too much family time. Um, and yeah, I hope uh, hope you guys all have, are having a great summer. I hope you're staying out of the heat. I know that parts of the country have had some really weird heat waves. Um, we are so far kind of staying out of that. It's, it's not cool. Um, but the week before we went to South Dakota, it was in the high 90s and now it's like in the low eighties, which is tolerable. High nineties are hard for me. I don't like hot weather, um, generally. And I especially, especially don't like it when, uh, my bedroom doesn't get enough air conditioning. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's it. I, uh, I want to try to get this edited and off today, maybe. Um, but definitely before the end of the weekend. So, um, if I don't, don't before 4th of July, then I hope you had a great 4th of July. And if not, um, if I do get it out before then, then happy Independence Day. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Happy knitting. Bye.